I was recently asked by a family member to check out their broken microwave. It wouldn't heat the food, and when you turn it on, it sounds like this. The engine motor is rattling and eventually stopped functioning altogether, so in this video I'm going to show you how to install a new microwave. Let's go! The first thing you want to do when getting a new microwave is measure the space in the cupboards. Make sure to get the height, the depth, and the width. Most larger microwaves will be about 29 inches wide, 16 inches deep, and 17 inches tall. Note that the front can be shorter than the back because of the door. Now that we've got the microwave, let's see what's inside. You have support screws, a charcoal filter, and a directional vent cover. The edges are sharp, so be careful. Next is a glass plate and the underneath filters and instructions. And finally the microwave, and that's about it. The microwaves are pretty heavy, so make sure you have a good place to set it down. I would suggest waiting on taking off the plastic till you're ready to put it up so it doesn't get scratched. Before we can take down the old microwave, first take out anything in the cupboards above it. Now before we go any further, I suggest you find a good story to listen to, especially if you're doing this project alone. I'm not sponsored, but I'll have this story linked below because it's fantastic. Alright, moving on, we'll next need to unplug the microwave. If you follow the cord, you should find the outlet in the back of the cupboard. Unplug it, then make sure there's a clear path for it to slide down the hole. The next step is to take out the two or three support bolts that are holding down the microwave. I highly recommend having a second person there holding the microwave as you unscrew it, because once these bolts are out, it will come crashing down. If you're doing it alone like me, make sure you have one hand under the microwave to catch it as you unscrew it. Be careful because it will fall as soon as the bolts are out. Grab the leftover bolts and you can see they're about 3-4 to four inches long. Knowing this will help you estimate how much you have to unscrew before the microwave falls down. Now that the microwave is removed, you can see that there's a metal support brace hanging on the wall. Unfortunately, not every brace is made the same. Although they usually are close to the same size, the location of the support tabs and hooks can vary depending on the make and model of the microwave. To find out if your new support brace matches the old one, we'll need to take it off and compare them. To do that, locate the screws on the left and right side, then take out the screws and the brace should come right off. With the brace removed, I can already tell that it's not going to fit because there's four support tabs that aren't in the same location as the old one. If we compare them, you can see on the old support brace there's two tabs, and on the new one there's four. So unfortunately, I have to take off the old brace and replace it with this new one. I would note that if you purchase the same manufacturer, it's common that the braces will match. So keep that in mind when buying. And on another note, you don't need to use 100 screws when putting in the brace. This is a good example of why you need to go out and buy a stud finder. I removed all the screws, but then found out they had tiled around the brace as well. I carefully used a razor blade to cut the grout, and the brace came off. The new brace fits perfectly, but in order for it to properly support the weight of the microwave, I need to use anchor bolts and mount them to the studs in the wall. These anchor bolts are much thicker than regular screws, so you'll want to use a smaller bit to pre-drill holes so they'll go into the wooden studs much easier. Once I have them tightened down, I'll need to also put in some grabber screws along the top and sides. With those in, the brace now can support the weight of the microwave, plus any frozen food that might be cooking. And now it's time to hang the new microwave. First take off the plastic, then open the door so we can take off this front vent to install the charcoal filter. Your microwave may vary, but there's likely going to be two or three screws along the top that need to be removed, which will then allow you to take off the vent cover. With the cover removed, grab your charcoal filter, which will look something like this. There should be an opening or cavity that you can slide the filter inside. Right now my filter's not installed correctly because it's sitting at an angle. I had to work with it so that it sat flush and covered the entire vent. From this angle you can see it's correct because none of the corners are bent and it sits straight up and down. With that installed, we can now put back the vent cover, then tighten all the screws. Now this next step is very critical and could be a fire hazard if not done correctly. This is the heat ventilation fan, and right now it's flowing upwards. I need to change my ventilation to forward instead of upwards, or else the air will blow into the bottom of the cupboard instead of out into the kitchen. If you have a ventilation system above your microwave, you can leave it flowing upwards, otherwise you'll need to change it forwards. 
Once the metal covers off, you can physically feel which way the air is blowing. There should also be markers on the fan indicating the direction of the flow. I removed all the screws holding down the motor, then I was able to pull it out. Once I pull it out, I can then rotate it so that the direction of the ventilation changes. If I freeze the frame, you can see here an arrow indicating the direction of the flow. I flipped it around so it now blows forward. With that in place, I can tighten the screws. However, some of the screw locations are gonna change. And I'll also need to use this metal plate to cover the openings so the air doesn't leak out the holes. With that adjustment, I slide it into place, then screw everything down. Now that we have the right ventilation, we're ready to hang up the microwave. However, this microwave uses three support bolts instead of two. Because it requires more support screws, I'll need to measure out the holes and drill them into the cupboards. The far right hole sits about six and three quarters, so I'm gonna go mark that out on the cupboard as well as the other holes. However, you may not have to measure by hand if your microwave comes with a template like this. If it does come with a template, you can cut it out and then place it on the cupboard to measure the right locations of the holes. Note that most templates are measured for the underside of the shelf, not the top, so you'll likely need to tape it to the underside of the shelf. The way the template works is when you lay it out, you'll be able to see the location where the bolts are gonna go that will hold up the microwave. Find the bolt holes, then make a mark where you're going to drill. I then used a 3-8 bit to drill the holes. With the holes drilled, I can now put on the microwave by setting it on the metal support tabs. Make sure you leave enough room to slide the power cord through the cupboard. While still holding the microwave up, I can now put in the support bolts. However, when I used my drill bit, the old hole was very close to the new one. Because the holes are so close together, I'll need to give extra support to the bolts. To provide that extra support, I'll be using a washer, as you can see here. The washer has more surface area and helps prevent the bolt from sliding through. With the washers in place, the next step is to tighten down the bolts. After that, plug in the microwave and make sure everything's working correctly. After a few seconds, the microwave will boot up, then you can follow the directions on the panel. Next, open it up and remove any tape or plastic inside, then place the rotating plate. Before you start using the microwave, you'll need to install these filters. These generally need to go underneath the microwave and can be installed by sliding in at an angle and pulling back. With the filter installed, put back any remaining items in the cupboard, and you now have a new microwave. And we're done here. If this was helpful, check out my other home repair videos. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.